Hall materials. There's so many differing opinions on which is the best one, but in reality, they all have their pluses and minuses. Now, instead of me just talking to you guys about the different types of hall materials, I decided to interview people who have those boats and cruise on them and live on them full time and know those hall materials through and through. So in today's episode, we're going to be looking at aluminum hauls. Fritz is uh, it's an aluminium boat built in 1988 by uh, Alaboot in Hindelopen. Uh, so she's a one-off boat built originally for a German engineer who wanted to go to the Arctic. So she was designed with that in mind. Uh, so as a result, she's got uh, you know, 2,000 litres of diesel, 2,000 litres of water, and we have uh, watertight bulkheads front and rear. And the aluminium is uh, eight millimeters below the water line, which is and it's strengthened all the way around with lots of stringers and all sorts of stuff. So, what are the the pros and cons you found? Or what are the, the pros of aluminium? What, well, uh, well the pros actually, for us yeah. were the strength of the aluminium. I mean, that's the, the the primary reason I was thinking about an aluminium boat. You know, you read about people hitting uh, containers at sea, although it's a rare occurrence, but. Uh, we, I just thought I wanted something that was super strong. Um, aluminium has the advantage over steel that obviously it doesn't rust in the same way, although on the cons it does oxidise and you do get corrosion, but not, not to the same extent as steel. Uh, so that was my primary reason for, for thinking of looking for an aluminium boat. Although we did look for other boats as well, we looked at fiberglass boats uh, at the same time that ended up with aluminium. What made you choose aluminium? Well, as I say, I think uh, it was tied up with the strength of the aluminium, uh, the, the lightness and the, the uh, durability of it. If you look after it, it'll, it'll go on for a long time. On my previous boat, I, I'd had a, an incident where I'd bounced off the bottom uh, and that had caused a crack in the fiberglass just forward of the keel where there was a compression and yeah. a decompression which required fairly extensive repairs. So I wanted something that I could you know have have some rough times with if in the, in those circumstances and uh, come out of it in not such a bad shape. I mean, uh, I've, you know on another YouTube channel, the sailing Nanji channel, I've recently been watching them you know they, their fiberglass boat went onto the rocks and they uh, they, they broke a mooring at night and they were pushed up onto a reef. Um, you know, they survived, they saved the boat, but it was hard work. Whereas I've seen photographs of an aluminium boat that's been thrown up on the rocks and aluminium will bend, but it gen tends not to uh, have punctures in it. So it'll, it'll take quite a lot of that sort of treatment. Not that I'm planning on putting the boat on the rocks, but these things happen. So that's uh, one of my thoughts. Factors. What's the displacement of the boat uh, uh, in the length? The length is 54 feet uh, overall and uh, displacement's 26 tonnes dry and then obviously as I say we've got two tonnes of fuel and two tonnes of deep water so with all that we're up to 30 tonnes and then all our junk on the boat we're well over 30 tonnes and she's unusual as well although not unusual for Dutch boats in that she has a lifting centreboard so the uh, ballast is actually nine tons of lead in the base of the boat uh, and we have a centreboard which is very similar to a dinghy that you can lower when you're heading into the wind and that provides, you know, protect, stops the leeway but when, if you're running with the wind behind you, you can have it up in the same way you would a dinghy so as a consequence our draft is only about 1.4 metres with the board up which is, enables us to get the boat in, you know, certainly in anchorages we can get quite close inshore where other people can't We've had some entertaining times in Holland, uh, in some of the inland waterways where there are lakes and moorings that you can go to, and people see us coming in and sort of looking, no, don't come in, but actually we're, we're, we're fairly shallow, so we can get into those places. And uh, what are the, the negatives of aluminum? Like things the... Well, the negative yeah. side is, is the uh, corrosion, galvanic corrosion. I mean, you need to be very careful with electric currents on the boat. Everything has positive and negative, there's no stray current uh, going through the hull. If you get that, then you, you can have corrosion occurring. Um, so we have, we have a meter fitted on the boat that I check every few days, just flick a switch and it gives me hopefully some green things. 
It does go red occasionally. I mean, that it's normally when I've done something to change the thing on the boat. Recently, I moved the uh, iridium antenna from the rail up into the top of the uh, the new uh, solar arch that we've had fitted. And when I put it on, it, it was obviously uh, connecting to ground, and then my my little light went red. But whenever that happens, there's always a uh, it's a half a day job to trace back through the electric system to find out where the where the fault is and yeah. fix it. Um, the other thing as well as electrical corrosion you can get corrosion from uh, chemicals uh, in the aft lazarette we had a generator before and it had a, a distillate overflow which was I think producing slightly acidic warp fluid and the previous owner had fed that into a a, a bottle basically, a big bottle, and I think at some point the bottle had obviously filled up and overflowed and this acidic solution had washed around inside so we've actually got some pitting in the back there which I need to keep you know, keep an eye on. I've treated it all and it's left exposed but uh, you know, that can happen and so you have to be careful in places where you can't easily get to uh, to make sure you don't get fluids accumulating. But generally, one of the other pluses of the aluminium boat is it's dry. I mean, our bilges, you know, the, the joke is you vacuum clean the bilge rather than clean it out with uh, sponges. And that's true on this boat. There's one place we get a bit of water near the fridges where I think you know, we're getting the, the condensate from the fridges. But other than that, the bilges tend to be dry. If someone's looking for an aluminium boat, like what, uh, what should they look for and what should they be wary of? Well, I think the corrosion is the big thing to be wary of. You, know, you, you want to make sure that you don't get a boat that's suffering with pitting or corrosion, because uh, you can get pinhole, uh, pinhole things in the boat, and that, you know, and they'll gradually grow and grow. And what what can happen, I've seen it in other other boats, is that uh, if somebody's done a patch up job and covered it with a bit of epoxy actually the corrosion will continue underneath and so the little pinhole gets bigger and bigger and bigger and so that doesn't solve the problem so if you find something like that you have to treat it uh, properly grind away all of the uh, corrosion and then have it treated and then seal it up and if it's so it's not, if it's not been treated properly uh, you can end up with a, a boat and again I've seen on other videos people who've uh, had extensive problems with aluminium boats and sorting that out so I think a good survey is important uh, to make sure that uh, you don't get one that's going to cause problems later on. Um, I mean, uh, structurally it's very sound, it's long lasting, so from a hull perspective there's not much to, to worry about, providing you, you're not worried about the corrosion. So aside from the, the meter you have to check for mm -hmm. the boat, is there any other tricks that you do to help keep the corrosion at bay? Um, well, as I said, the electrical is very important. So whenever you put anything new electrical into the system, you've got to make sure it's wired in properly. You don't want any wires that are exposed that might touch the hull. Um, the other thing we have is a, an isolation transformer. So we're completely isolated from the uh, shore power because there's no physical connection. It runs through a transformer. And uh, that means, although the AC current can pass, DC currents can't flow and it's the DC current that causes the damage. AC currents actually on our boat and all aluminium boats if they're wired properly the uh, neutral is grounded on the boat because that's part of the, it's effectively the earth system runs through that on the boat but um, obviously you, you, know, you need to avoid stray DC currents so an isolation transformer is very important. The things to watch for is the, the corrosion and, and make sure it's got a good electrical installation because that's the can be one of the things that causes the problems. Um, an interesting side point on our boat is, is the teak deck. One of the things that was disappointing for us, or it was it was good that the previous owner had had the teak deck replaced and it's glued on now, which is kind of the more modern way of fitting a teak deck. Uh, the original teak deck had been screwed and that meant that there's hundreds of little holes in this beautiful aluminium structure that wouldn't otherwise leak. Uh, but as a consequence, they filled the holes when they fitted the new teak deck. But I think maybe there's been some that weren't quite done properly or there's been some movement over time and the, some of the holes have opened up. And then if you get any water under the teak, 
you suddenly find you've got a leak and it's very hard to locate. And last winter we had a, a, a job going around because we've had the boat four years now, so we identified about six or seven of these leaks. So I spent quite a bit of time pulling the headlinings down and, and pulling the insulation off because the boat's very well insulated to find all these holes and fill them. So I think word of wisdom on that is if you can check out to make sure that you've not got any holes <laughs> or if they are they're properly filled. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.